everybody, it's Tamika. I am here to give you like my interpretation of swap. So it's like a swap 101. So if you are a newbie or a new paper crafter, you're just joining the YouTube community and you want to get into swaps and figuring out what it's all about, I'm going to give you a general idea of what swapping is. Of course, every hostess has their own interpretation of swaps, but these are general rules of thumb that new persons or newbies or even veteran um, people should follow. So the first question that I have or that I get often, I have them listed out here on this paper, is what is a swap? So a swap is when you and one other person or more, a group of people, decide to exchange an item. So typically um, you can do a one-on-one, -on -one, so that means you and somebody else decide to exchange um, whatever it is. So it could be tags or theme or uh, anything that you want to that you want to swap it's, of course we're speaking in terms of paper crafting so you guys will come up with what it is that you want to swap how many how much you want to spend what's your due date things like that if you're in a group um, the hostess will determine how many people are in a group so when you're placed into a group let's say you're going to be in a group of five so that means you and four other people are exchanging the same type or theme of items so you would need to create four separate items of whatever it is that hostess is asking for and send it to her if that's the kind of swap that you're doing those are the swaps that I do so I'll ask people to join a swap I'll come up with a theme I usually come up with a sample and rules and things like that so you as a participant will sign up for the swap and you have to make how many ever it is that the hostess is asking you to make so um, that should pretty much explain um, what a swap is you're just basically exchanging an item or group of items with another person or a group of people so that is a swap okay how to enter uh, for my swap you would enter in on YouTube um, I usually host on YouTube so I would upload a video usually my videos are uploaded at the very end of the month um, or one to two days into the next month so the 30th the 31st the first or the second is when I try to upload new swap videos so um, but for my swap you would just sign up on that particular video that I'm asking you to sign up on and you leave um, you know yes I'd like to join it's pretty simple just a couple words and say you'd like to join after you of course followed the rules so um, that's how you would enter some people may be hosting swaps on Instagram and some people may be hosting swaps on Facebook wherever the social media or are yeah you know, the platform that the person is swapping on you'll know there where you need to enter in there may may direct you to their website um, but typically for me if you're uh, joining a swap on my YouTube channel you will sign up on that particular video and uh, for my swaps you are confirmed that you're in the swap I never advise people to start making a swap unless they get a confirmation from me that you are entered otherwise you're just wasting supplies so um, but yeah I would definitely make sure that you get a confirmation from the hostess that you are in indeed in that swap and that you signed up correctly so that's how you usually enter a swap. You just leave your name, leave your comment, whatever the hostess is asking for on that platform, be it Instagram, a Facebook group, a Ning site, YouTube, any of that kind of thing, a website by itself. So that's how you would typically enter the swap. But of course, you want to follow the hostess rules of how they're asking you. They may announce it on YouTube, but tell you to sign up on the website. So you really just have to pay attention. Um, so once uh, I want to talk about flakers, so a lot of times people ask me, what is a flaker? What does that mean? A flaker or a late person. So we call flakers in the community, people that signed up for a swap and did not come through. Like they've waited the whole month or however long the hostess gave you to participate in the swap. They've waited and they have not turned in their swap. And that creates trouble for the hostess. Um, to have to find another person to um, fill in your spot. Now, I have a rule of you have to have crafty videos uploaded on your channel. A lot of people don't like my rules with that. And you must live in the United States. And um, you must not have been late or flaked in a previous swap. 
So like I said, uh, people don't like that particular rule for me. Now I have found before, if years before, when I just um, started doing swaps, I would let any and everybody play. You can have monster car truck videos on your channel and I would let you know those people play. It turns out those people are the most people that are not accountable for their swap they don't come through because or they're high they have no subscribers and no videos up and then they don't have a picture up so they're just like an orange man behind the circle named ddggi so um no i stopped letting those type of participants play now you may be you ddggi may be <laughs> a well-rounded crafter and swap all up and down the neighborhood but i don't know that so to hold some accountability so that you can participate. If I see that you're uh, an avid player in the swap game somewhere else, or you're on Facebook, or um, you uh, upload videos on your channel, yeah, I would put trust into letting you participate. And it's not that I'm being stank about it, like, oh, I don't want her to play, she don't have any crafty videos. No, it's just that I don't know who you are. You could be a scammer or anybody you know so that's why I don't so it's like I said it's not me picking and choosing like I don't want you to be in it you're not good I don't want you to be in it but it's me saying you have some type of representation on YouTube I'm gonna you're gonna hold yourself accountable because some people are gonna look at the list and say DDGGI1 flaked in Tamika swap so I'm not gonna swap with her one-on-one -on -one. so those things people do look at when they're when you're asking to swap or asking around and somebody to be a partner for whatever reason they look at it and say oh you've been flake you i don't know if i should swap with you send yours first that's the type of person you say you send your swap then i'll send mine <laughs> but um but uh yeah so that's a flaker basically they just don't show up so when i say it creates trouble for the hostess it is a uh, just you know you do have an angel list i do keep a backup list so i uh, thank god for my angels um that come through so they say okay they've missed the swap cut off like all the spots are filled they just say okay put my name on the list and i just go down the list based on first come first serve you know like the the first person that missed the swap I'll just go down that list and ask them to fill in for this person so um, let's just say Tiffany was supposed to play in the swap she didn't come through I've been trying to contact Tiffany via YouTube Instagram Facebook email Twitter Tiffany's not responding I take and it's past the due date that I should have seen It's due on the 7th today is the 12th I haven't seen Tiffany swap I haven't heard from Tiffany at all so I'm assuming that Tiffany is not playing. So now I have to go down the list, go back to the video, go down the list of all the people who said that they would be a backup or an angel. And um, those people are on standby. Like they wanted to participate. They have an idea of what they want. They have all the stuff. They just haven't made it yet because they're waiting to get the notification that they need to be filled in. So usually angels have their swap done quickly like oh I'm already set to go they have it to me you know in a week so because everybody is waiting on that angel in that group to fill that spot so they don't have the full three four weeks that the original person had they have like one week to turn it around and they get it to me not slacking on quality of their work but they're they're diligent about getting it finished so the hostess has to go through find an angel so it's just like okay I'm gonna ask Sandra Sandra can you fill in a spot for this person in group one I have to wait 24 hours for Sandra to respond Sandra doesn't respond I go to Kelly Kelly can you fill in the swap for this Kelly doesn't respond I go to Cindy Cindy oh Cindy says yes so good Cindy got it third person down she's gonna do it she's gonna get it to me in a week meanwhile the person that's in Tiffany's original group all of those people are waiting so group one two four five six and seven have already shipped out videos are already up swap is over but group number three is sitting there because they're waiting on Cindy to fill in that spot because she's an angel because Tiffany didn't do it I hope you guys get the scenario so it is important when you sign up make sure you want to play I know life happens keep the hostess updated and then it's not a big deal it's like a week after the swaps started and you signed up, you're like, oh my God, my job just told me I have to fly to Florida for the next couple of weeks. I'm not going to get my swap done. Can you please find somebody for me? Okay, good. I'm going to put you, find an angel, boom, spot's done. It's early enough. Everything should just be right on schedule. So that works fine. But you can't have, me, have the hostess look and look and look for you. And at the end, oh, I forgot. Please don't do that. That's 
just don't because we as hostesses we work most of the time I work a full-time job I have a family I cook and you know all the other stuff so I kind of want the swaps I love doing the swaps but I want them to go and flow and just tick tock tick tock get in and out I don't want to wait and have packages waiting for uh, a person to send to send something or whatever so um so flakers and later slate people just be mindful when you're signing up for a swap you are ready to do that swap so um that's that and I want to talk about okay I talked about the angels what an angel is they're a person that's basically on standby they already have their items they already kind of know what they want to do for the swap and they're just ready for the word so angels are a blessing because yeah they are quick and they get the swap in really really quickly so without compromising uh, the integrity of the swap uh, I want to talk about payment so postage as we know postage is rising well postage is rising for the month of january 2019 depending on when you're watching this video so um you want to make sure that you're getting all the information in regards to postage now um if you're shipping in the u.s uh we're just talking u.s right now um and i ship in a padded envelope so that is now eight dollars we ask as hosts that you send either cash money or you send it to our paypal account now i have specifically written this out on my PayPal account in like bold letters it's right in the middle it's center aligned like <laughs> you can't miss it but yet I get a lot of questions about or we have some issues with this PayPal situation so um, you can also send sticky stamps like st sticky not pre-printed that you have them you know you pay for postage and you have them send a little label because it has a time on it and if you send it to the hostess wait till it gets shipped back that's expired and you're unable to use it so sticky stamps like the old school sticky stamps cash in a check or money order in your swap or send it via paypal now you want to send it friends and family that is important because paypal takes a fee from the postage when you send it for goods or services or what have you it takes a fee out so what, what you're sending yes you're sending eight dollars the hostess is getting six dollars and 45 cents so if everybody does that that dollar and 65 cents adds up times how many ever people are in the swap or how many ever people are sending po paypal sometimes you may not know I don't know if you're notified or not that it didn't go friends and family but if you go on to PayPal you'll see it right there it's a friends and family option that way you send eight dollars and the recipient gets eight dollars that's important also important sometimes the name don't match up on PayPal so your name might be Jessica and on your PayPal it says playing with paper art or whatever we don't know who that is I didn't know Jessica had a store called playing with paper art so in the comment section you want to put and I know there's one person that does this very well. I'm not going to call her name out, but she has all the information like plastered on her whole swap. Like you're not going to never not know who I am, but you want to put, my name is Jessica. I'm in group four of your shabby chic postcard swap. This is my postage, you know, in the comment section so that the hostess gets it. They can match that up. Okay. Jessica has paid. This is her YouTube name. A done deal. So, um, that's really important. Uh, another thing about uh, payment, and I'm actually going to tie in packaging in with this, is everything has to fit into, uh, for me, for my swap, the padded envelope. It's, it's easy to do the padded envelope because I can, I know how much it is. All I have to do is print off a label from here and send it off. It's easier to do that. Plus, it's padded. It adds a little bit more comforts for your swap. Um, but as far as payment, I put on mine, you pay your $8 and if you're swap, so let's just say we're back in the same group of, of, uh, what did I say? Five. So you have to create four, um, swaps. So if you're in a group of five and you have to create four swaps, can your four swaps minus if you're making one for hostess minus if you send in a hostess a gift, can your four swaps to each of your four group members fit into that padded envelope if it can yes send your eight dollars if it can't i put you need to send an additional fifteen dollars so that means fifteen plus eight so you would send twenty three dollars 
to the hostess and it's not because I need a little extra change to get some Starbucks coffee it's because I then hostess has to have to go out to uh, get some padded envelopes Now, I usually go to the Dollar Tree and I get the really big gray padded envelope so if you're in a group of five you have to send four I have to buy then four and maybe yours if yours don't fit either but um, four four envelopes so that's already, we're in the hole, $4.28 because we're including tax. So already, off of your $23, we're already chunked down. Plus, we have to send your swap back, which is not now going to be $8. Now it's going to be somewhere around $12 or $13. Now, also in addition to that, all the rest of your group members are now not going to be $8 with their postage. Theirs are going to be $12, $13, $14, dollars, depending on the weight of each of the packages. So now... Your $15 that you sent doesn't even cover your swap because you have to send your $8 anyway to send your swap back to you. You know, you send your $8 so that your swap can come back to you because the hostess doesn't pay for that. So we've already knocked it down to just $15 left. Now we add on an extra five for each, for everyone else, three to five dollars or how much ever, you know, the swap is. I'm running out of money. You've not sent enough money and I still have to come out of pocket for the rest it's just really enough to knock the edge off and I'm not saying that to discourage you from packing in you know your swap but just be mindful of I'm not gonna put this in this huge shopping bag and give everybody a shopping bag because I know that's not gonna fit and she has to you know the person has to do extra work and maybe come out of pocket so just being mindful of your swap sometimes bigger is not always better but just be mindful of packaging up your swap when it's returned to you. Um, just what needs to be done with that. So it's not, I know somebody had complained about um, $15 plus the eight. So 15 and the shipping. Yes, it's 15. Yeah, because you're knocking off the edge of what I have to come out of pocket because now you've made everybody else's swap not fit into their basket, into their envelope. So that explains the $15 so that kind of can keep you in mind when you're doing your swap what you want to do if you really are dead set on packaging up your stuff in there then by all means be my guest but if you're a little being conscious of if you're doing a swap from me a swap from her a swap over there that adds up all the time so just be mindful of of that so um, the next thing I have down here is the rules of the swap and I mentioned earlier the rules that I have in mind is you must have crafty videos uploaded on your channel. You must live in the United States and you must not have been late or flaked before. Those are my rules. The, typically the hostess rules are um, the same. Some people may not require you to have crafty videos up. Um, and like I said, I used to do that. I don't do that anymore because I just, I want a, a, a more accountable um, swapper. So that's just for me. Um... The next thing I want to say is, I have down here, do your best. So, um, there are new swappers, there are, are new uh, newbie crafters, and um, there's some, you know, veterans. So those are the three. You have new swappers, like they already been doing stuff in their community, or they've been going to like little um, stuff in their neighborhood, but they haven't really swapped online in the YouTube community. Um, and then there are new people, period, who just picked, just now found out about a Martha Stewart scoreboard. So when I say do your best, a hostess can tell. And I was actually um, listening to Ida. Ida is created to create. I'll actually put her video down below. Gina also from Scrapanology, like seven, eight years ago, did a swap video too. I'll put both of those ladies down um, below so you guys can kind of get an idea. I'm not just making this stuff up <laughs> by myself. So, um, um, do your best. We can tell as hostesses and group members know if you are a new crafter or you waited to the day before the swap was due and you have slapped something together. We are aware because we see your work, especially if you expect to, if you are expected to have crafty videos already uploaded on your channel, we know how you work. We know you can craft. We know what you're capable of because we've seen it on your channel and then we get it and it's like, dang. Who did this it is unfair and I I'm hope hoping I don't get a whole bunch of dislikes on on this but I'm telling the truth it is unfair for your group participants who put their whole effort heart and soul into their swap and then they get back and it's like 
wow, this person didn't even try. Like we we can tell. Um, and I get those I I get those emails and those comments like. I really felt like uh, so-and-so didn't participate and I wish that that person would have put in a whole bunch of more effort, but oh well, because they've spent so much of their time making sure the details and stuff of their swap are at its peak, at its finest. They've done their best work and it's a little disappointing when we see that, especially when you're on that channel, you're like, hmm, I just saw you do a swap with so-and-so and I thought that that was bomb, but then this is what I got. So I always put that in the bottom of my, um, when I'm do, uh, writing the swaps on my website, I always say, do your best work. Send something that you would want to receive. If I, I, When I'm doing a swap, I'm looking at it, I'm like, is it okay? Is it packaged right? Is it sloppy? Is it, oh, I can't do it. I got to do it over or do this part over because I don't want anybody laughing at my stuff. I don't want anybody talking about my stuff behind my back. <laughs> People will do that, but I'm gonna not going to hand it over to them so they can do it. So I always say do your best. And I struggle with telling people that, you know what, you I'm going to have you just go back. I really want to say I want you to go back. I want you to practice doing this and come back when you're a little bit more practiced because... I can't, you can't just slap this piece of paper together. Um, but I don't say that because that's me. And, and I know people try. So I don't. But um, I don't know. I don't, I never know what to say to that. I just be like, oh my God, I know that you can do better. But I just send it off and, and I hope for the best. So uh, I say all that to say, just do your best. You know if you're doing your best. We know if you're doing your best. So I'm just going to wrap that up. Um, the next thing I have is give time for the return of the swap. So, um, I am not a robot. Other hostesses are not a robot. <laughs> so, uh, if you have your swap in and by the due date and the videos are up, typically after I, I do the video, I wake up early in the morning, like early, 5.30, and I record group one because I don't want to take away from family time at night unless it's after midnight or something if I stay up late but I typically wake up early in the morning and I do I record a video and I save the video and edit the video all while I am packaging up the swap to be mailed so that when I go to work on my lunch hour I can go drop them off at the post office so that's how it works if your video has gone up chances are your swap went out that day or the next day if I was in a rush it goes out the next day but um, a lot of people understand that but there are some that's like the swaps been due to me and I've had it for a couple days and they're like when do I get my swap back and I was like Whoa, 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 I'm still waiting on group three. I still have to record. You're in group six, so you're like way down the line. So give us time to return the swap to you. And I mean, just a turnaround for that be like two, three weeks. I think that's okay. I usually try to have mine back before the next swap start because I don't want them to cross. I don't want to still have swap members unless they haven't paid their postage. I don't want to still have swap people from the last group and I'm receiving swaps in from the new group. I never want that to happen because it get conf it gets confusing because a lot of people who play the swap um, play back to back like they'll keep playing so I don't know if this is Keisha from the postcard swap or I don't know if this is Keisha's from the note card swap like I gotta open it up and separate it no I like them to get out so I do try to get them out as fast as I can so but I wanted to just say give the hostess time um, to return the swap give them some some time uh, to return the swap if you ask be nice about it don't just say where my swap at so uh, just be nice about it um, touching on international swaps I've hosted two maybe three international swaps um, I understand that you guys don't have a lot of people that swap a lot of crafty groups and I, it's unfortunate that you guys just don't get together like and do your own international like somebody from the international just take the rein and say hey I'm gonna host all the international swaps um, the reason why I'm gonna say one reason why or for me I won't say everyone the reason why we're hesitant to to do the international swaps actually there's two reasons one is the postage the postage is expensive so that means you guys have to do like little trinket things little bitty swaps that weigh not a lot not don't weigh a ton just really light like a pocket letter or a coin or a tag or something like that that don't weigh much that's fine but I know that a lot of people complain that 
they don't want to buy or they don't want they don't like if I'm doing a D stash and they're like oh I would pay for that but that's so heavy they come to me in Australia or wherever you know it, England it's so much money to get it there so you know I understand I wouldn't want to pay twenty two dollars for a paper pack and plus the paper pack cost no way I understand so that's one reason why I think hostesses are um, reluctant to host a swap the other reason is okay let's just say I've hosted the, the two three swaps that I've hosted for international um, so this is what this is how that happens you host a swap bling 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 then it comes in at sporadically so that means if everybody doesn't work on that swap right away and get to you some may be coming two weeks some come in three weeks I've even had it where I waited six weeks for somebody's swap to get to me so it's just I'm just holding international swaps for a month here just a month month and a half before I can get them all together so once they all come together we got everybody's swap package right in front of me I separate them out then I have to individually weigh go to the post office package them up go to the post office and weigh each package so uh sydney in australia and rebecca in italy and um keisha in i don't know i can't think asia let's just say so i have to go wait go sit it at the post office get it weighed come back okay this is going to be 1732 i write it on the package this is going to be and i do that for the all the groups so i usually have five six groups that's like 25 30 people and I do take that in so then I take all the packages back home and then I email or leave a message in the comment section on YouTube or Facebook or Instagram wherever I can find them and I tell them what their cost is okay so Sydney yours was 1732 I got it wait that's how much you owe not all the time that money translates perfectly so you might send 1732 I'm not getting that back so then I wait for uh, a money order or, well, they can't do it, PayPal or sometimes I do get cash from the other country, but I can't take that to the bank. So I just literally collect it. I have a little collection of foreign money that is like, dang it, she sent the money, but I can't, it's not, I can't do anything with it. By the way, Canadian money is super cool. You can see right through it. It's so cool. Anyway, um... <laughs> random tangent um so yeah so i'll just send it back and just you know be done with the whole thing but all that back and forth and weighing and coming back and then emailing and did i get the, all of my it's a lot to do especially if this is something that you do as a side as, as a hobby so that's one of the reasons why i am hesitant to host an international swap so um i hope i have touched on everything for you guys um, I hope you understand it. I hope I wasn't too rough or you thought I was mean. I apologize in advance, but um, that's basically the synopsis of swap, swap rules, packaging, angels, um, do your best, give some return time, how to enter, what's a flaker, that kind of thing. So hopefully this explains, answers all of your questions so now I have something set in stone I can refer to it when people ask I'll just link this video so um, we're, we're, it's pretty long here anyway so um, I hope you guys understand if you have any questions though still leave them down below in the comment section and I will answer them individually so I may do an update on this or what have you but leave them down below and I appreciate you guys very much those who swap those who do great been doing this for a long time so I appreciate all my consistent happy swappers and I love you all so congratulations to the newbie stepping out to do their first video and or their first swap you guys this is the first step you will be addicted to it i can tell you right now it's something that you're gonna love once you get into the right group or the right format or section of people and you and you don't get the you know the rough end you don't experience the people who do you wrong if you get into that right group stick to that group because typically those are the ones that make you the most happy so um good luck to everybody and i will talk to you soon like the video share it with whoever you think needs to know this and um leave a comment if you need another question to be answered all right talk to you soon bye